so happy to be here and uh, so excited to be in this event. Uh, as Babita said, I come from academia, so I've always tried to be close to our student communi community. And although I have been in Accenture for 13 years, driving our data science and AI agenda, I still teach in Imperial. So I have always tried to keep in touch with our academic community, with our student community. And it's a, it's a great pleasure to see so many students here. Uh, typically, when I go to the events, it's always business people, and it's nice because I'm in consulting, so I want to sell more. But having more and more students in this type of events, it's a great aspiration for my company, for myself, and for the wider AI community. Um, so I wanted to start with a personal note, just to loosen up. And since we have many students, and I'm sure many of them could be hungover based on my students when I go to Imperial, uh, I would like to ask you a question. Who is the person that knows you best in the world? Just think. Is it your husband? Is it your girlfriend or boyfriend? Is it your mother, your father? Just guess. Hmm? No? So the person that knows me best is my executive assistant. So it's the person that knows my schedule, the person that knows my family, the person that knows every activity that I do every day. So last year, when it was my birthday, my team, my global team, conspired with my husband. And they said, she travels too much. She, she doesn't see her kids. I have two boys, nine and six. Uh, she's always on in the road. She doesn't exercise. You have to do something. So instead of giving me a gift, they gave a gift to my executive assistant. So they built a custom AI application so they can plan my life better. And what does that mean? Using artificial intelligence, using conversational AI, and using all the data that I have through my emails, the data of the family, all the channels of communication they have, just to plan my life. And it's amplifying this human experience. So I'll give you an example. And because of GDPR, we are in Europe. I cannot show you the actual application on my personal data. We have an extract of the advice that this AI uh, application, custom AI application, has given to me on Sunday evening. So let's play the Siri application. Assuming we can play it. Good morning, Afina. I hope you had a lovely weekend. You have a list of key activities to do this week. Let me highlight the top ones. On Wednesday, there is a submission of the HPL proposal. Based on analysing email trails, you have yet to finalise the QA review. This must be completed by today noon to comply with internal processes. I have cleared your diary from 9 till 12, so you have time to review this. You have a trip to Atlanta scheduled for Tuesday noon. There is a hurricane expected in the East Coast. We will monitor real-time how this progresses and will update all participants of the meeting if it has to be cancelled. In the case it's cancelled, a virtual meeting has been set. To fill the gap in your diary, we have also queued a series of calls through prioritisation analysis. You have a time and expenses submission deadline on Friday. Expenses have been preloaded from your Amex and your timesheet has been pre-populated. In case of any missing information, an alert will be sent Thursday morning. We have analysed your physical activity and you didn't exercise enough last week. To improve on this, we have booked you a tennis class at 8pm tonight and again at 8pm on Friday. Your husband is flying back from Korea today. Since you haven't seen him in three weeks, we suggest you have a date night on Saturday evening. You haven't had fish for a while, so may I suggest Milo's? And don't forget, in two weeks it is Harry's birthday and you have yet to arrange the birthday party. Analysing his web searches, we believe he would really love the PS4 Football Pro gift. Do you want me to order this online for you? Your weekly and daily tasks are now fully updated. Have a great day. And Athena, your mum called again and I quote, don't forget to have lunch again. And that's real. And because I come from a Greek family and whoever has his fat Greek wedding, that's the most important tip. It's my mom's tip. So 
I just wanted to start with this note because we are using AI in our daily lives. And uh, I'm using it more than other people, but my kids actually use it more than me. And I love the quote about our next generation. Our next generation is using AI in every single thing they do. My kids do not have books at school. My kids, my kids use online and virtual books to learn about history, to learn about literature, to learn about geography. Why? Because this is the future. Why? Because all the lessons have to be interactive and they learn through experience. So whether we like it or not, AI is already embedded in our lives, in our daily lives, in our daily tasks, and we have a responsibility as key leaders and you as future leaders uh, in the companies that you will work in, the society that you will be, to be able to use this information, the data, in a very responsible way. So saying that, <clears throat> what are the three key things that we are looking when we are talking about AI? We are talking about automation. We are talking about analytics, big data, data flows, data supply chain. And we are talking about artificial intelligence in the, in the concept of conversational AI. So how do we bring these three things together to be able to drive results for our clients, for our society, for all the people that we interact on in a daily basis? So what I wanted to start with is what are the key themes that we see when we are talking about AI? First of all, we are talking about adaptive and living processes. With the inflows of data, and especially the streaming of data real time, what we see is that business processes now have become living processes. When you do have a data process, when you do have an analytical process, you know that this will interrupt a business process. So how can you re-engineer, reprocess a business process to be able to make it much more agile? If you are a commercial director, and suddenly you get information about campaigns real time, you have to interrupt the business process because now you have to react to the consumer's perception much faster. If you are running a supply chain, a digital supply chain, you have to take into account real-time stock information to be able to adjust your stock levels, your stock out levels in a real-time manner. So we see across the business processes, there are real-time applications of AI and business processes are seriously interrupted. At the same time, we are becoming more and more data native. What we have seen is that not just the volumes of data have exploded, but actually there is an overwhelming volumes of volume of data that companies consume on a daily basis. So how are you able to select this data that makes sense for you? So how you can make a company make decisions not, not just based on the raw data, but on the insights that are being derived by the data in a consistent manner. And we have great uh, examples from companies like Adidas uh, in the fashion uh, retail industry that have transformed the way they make decisions by using data throughout the value chain. Of course, responsibility. We are talking about responsible AI and we are talking about ethical AI. But don't forget that AI creates bias when it comes to information setting. So how can you eliminate this bias by using tools and AI applications when you make decisions based on data? This is something that is extremely important. This is something that we are working with many of our technology partners like Microsoft. Joseph will talk later on, on how to take bias out of the data and the information that you, you get. And lastly, what is the network effect? So how you are able to create a value chain across the organization that will take the information that you ingest, but in a manner that it flows seamlessly through all the business functions, from HR and finance, to supply chain, to commercial and sales and marketing, in a way that it doesn't interrupt the decision-making process. So let's make it a bit real. So let's look at uh, some examples. And uh, <clears throat> I try to put examples from various industries. Telcos, banks, CPG companies. So as kind of to 
at least uh, infuse some curiosity about what other people are doing, what other companies are doing. This is a great example from a global telco. Uh, you know, every company is in, is in the business of either saving money or making money. That's it. It's a simple kind of problem that they have. So here, what the global telco wanted to do is how can I use AI in a way that can power my customer service, that can power my omnichannel experience. So I'm able not just to save money by consolidating, streamlining all my customer interaction points in a way that is seamless, but also will allow me to repurpose some of the people that I have in what we call back office, so call centers and other agents, to be more of a revenue generation machine for us, rather than just a simple interaction with the, the clients. So what we have done is we have run with them a big care program to be able to reduce the number of interaction points you as consumers have with the telco. So instead of activating your subscription or activating your programs in four different channels, to be able to do this activation seamlessly in one channel, in two channels. Because how many of you want to talk to a telco in five different channels? No one. No one. We all want to be monochannel. We all want to have a preference. Either you want to interact at the POS, you want to interact just in the call center, you want to interact online. So how I can create an experience that can take me from five channel interaction to one possible channel interaction. So the purpose is, first of all, reduce the capex, the cost that I have consistently in those back office channels, and being able to fuel the revenue growth that I want to have by saving this money, money and putting them for top line growth. So let's play a video just to show Artificial you the Artificial intelligence case. makes even the simplest of tasks easier than ever. Jump from an email straight into chat. Your virtual assistant can guide you through your next steps. Talk about an upgrade. And this is the power that AI can, uh, can give you, because now you pretty much from understanding what you want to do, so getting through the Q&A process and knowledge management, the right recommendation for you. Understanding what are your limitations in terms of budget and create personalized offers and pricing recommendations for you. And then down to the order and the delivery in a mono-channel type of way, can give you the handset at your home, again, in a seamless manner. This is the power that AI and data can bring to you. Now, the second example is actually from a different industry. 
and that's a global CPG company. This is one of the biggest uh, uh, beverages companies in the world. Uh, and you know consumer goods companies are quite classical in the way they make decisions, especially around commercial and supply chain. So what they, what they said is, I want to break the silos. I want to create not just a new operating model, but a new business model. Because I operate in 45 markets, uh, information doesn't flow seamlessly across the organization. I'm not using AI to the extent that I would like, because first of all, every single country has a different data lake, different AI components. When it comes to both compute AI and conversational AI, different systems. But more importantly, the data-driven and AI culture is not embedded there. So they said, OK, let's start and prove the power of AI with some low-hanging fruits use cases. So if you were, because we have many Europeans here and many companies, if you were to think of the free trade that we have in Europe, you have free movements of goods from one country to the other. So if you are a big CPG company, uh, you interact in 17 markets, and within each of the market, you have at least 10 retailers. And within each retailer, you have different store formats. So pretty much when a big company like this one has to start thinking of what are the trade agreements they should be setting, what are the pricing agreements they should be setting, this decision is not made easy. Plus, also because of the free trade agreements, you can actually manufacture and have an agreement with, let's say, Lidl in Spain. But actually, this good can be then moved to Germany, which creates revenue leakage from one market to the other. So there is revenues lost both from a retailer perspective but a consumer goods perspective. Just to give you some sizing of the money that is lost because of this leakage, in a big consumer comp company, based on our benchmarks, a typical loss when it, in an annual basis is from 300 million to 500 million annually because of this revenue leakage. So what they've said is I want an AI application that can ingest this information in all the European markets across all the channels that I'm interacting, the retail channels, and I want to identify what are those revenue leakage opportunities. And what is now the right pricing and trading strategy I should be setting to be able to avoid the revenue leakage, but act on it. And therefore, I can also advise my retailers as to exactly how they should be setting price. That's one. Second, one of the other key issues, because we are talking about a beverages company, is how then I can get closer to consumer, especially since for them the on-trade channel, which is horeca, hotels, restaurants, cafes, is extremely important. So by using the power of AI and what we call direct-to-consumer applications, we were able to increase the penetration in this channel by more than 10%. Now, you say, OK, this is great, another Accenture use case. It's the speed. For me, all of those use cases that you hear now is the speed that a client can go to market. Because in the past, if you were to think of this type of engagements, it would take you one year to build a data lake, at least one year. Then another six months to even decide internally on what are those key use cases that you want to act on. Another six months to build the applications. Now we were able to do that, both in the previous example and in this example, in three months, end to end. Because from the moment you go to cloud, from the moment you can actually deploy <coughs> ready build applications at speed, at an enterprise level, by using many of the technology partners that you see in here. And this is something that we have been working very closely with Microsoft. Uh, from the moment you can have one single integrated plan and one single integrated process across all the markets that you are operating, this is feasible. And lastly, global financial institution. All of you have heard about anti-money laundering, right? Anti-money laundering is extremely important 
because if you were to think of financial regulation and crime detection, there are huge fines behind every bank that there is suspicion that they are transact uh, transacting funds that potentially on the back of that there is fraudulent behavior and terrorist behaviors, right? So one of our, the biggest banks in the world, they wanted to use AI and ML to be able to detect uh, financial crime and prevent for financial crime. This is a highly regulated market. This is a client that operates in 45 markets. So just in the first year, they were able through the power of AI by using a combination of 15 different AI technologies to be able to have cost savings of 230 million versus a big fine of at least a billion that they were about to have. And also at the same time, have a 60% reduction in false positive alerts. So, saying that, how do you scale? And how do we also scale in applied intelligence? You have to harness the end-to-end -end capabilities that you have in the company. I don't buy that in your companies, in your businesses, you don't have technologies. You have everything under the sun. All my clients have everything. They have bought everything. But how do you create a seamless environment to take advantage of those capabilities? You have to balance the human and machine collaboration. AI and machines will not substitute the human decisions. So we always say amplification of the human experience and not substitution of the human experience. And you have to create those ecosystems of innovation. There isn't one client of mine that is not investing in what we call AI labs. COEs, to be able to incubate those ideas. So with that, I'm, I will close. So food for thought as you go through these sessions in the, in the next two days, you have to think what is your new possible with AI. And remember, AI is more than automation. AI is more than RPA. AI is more than virtual assistance. It's the intelligence that you put behind the technology to be able to drive better decisions, both for you personally and for your companies. So with that, thank you very much. I hope you have a great session. Hope you have a great day. We will be around. So happy to talk to you uh, throughout the day. Thank you. That, stay with me. I'm not going to let you go just yet. Oh my yet, God, I thought that was that's event. okay. No, <laughs> sure. Thank you so much for that. Um, at this point, we're just going to open up the floor for questions from you guys. And I should just say, um, I didn't say this a little earlier, but if you would like to ask a question to any of our speakers this morning, just raise your hands. We have a brilliant team which are just here with a number of roving microphones. They will come to you. And if you can just say your name and where you're from and pose your question. So we'll give it a go if that's OK. Absolutely. See if there's just a quick question to uh, ask Real you time. I mean, Absolutely. that's the power of AI. Yeah, real time. I didn't if know If you'd like to was, ask uh... Athena any questions, please raise your hands and we'll get a microphone to you. Anybody would like to ask a question? Don't be shy. We've got somebody here. Lovely. Thank you. If you can just say your name and where you're from. Hi, I'm uh, Thosha Mudley, and um, I'm with Amsterdam AI. Thank you so much for a great presentation. Thank you. Um, I loved your personal assistant. I would love to have a personal assistant like that. But I think it's also kind of scary, uh, that level of invasion, uh, loss of privacy. And what I also noticed was your, um, for instance, your son's search history also included in uh, the intelligence of the AI. So what would you say to people who see that and are afraid and you know, how can we embrace this new future that I think it's going to make us so much more productive, I agree, but how can we embrace it? Yeah. Thank you. And that's a key point, being productive, but not having that fear factor. Yeah, and that's a good point. And uh, look, first of all, we cannot be disillusioned, right? My kids, that generation, I have nine and six-year-old boys, right? They share everything. They do share, they're not afraid to share. Why? Because they believe it amplifies their experience. Uh, and uh, obviously in Europe through GDPR we have put some, I would say, controls and privacy and regulation around how we share information. But you always have the ability to opt out. You don't have to share if you don't want to share. So you have control. It's not exactly the same in the States yet. 
Uh, and we have seen examples. Hopefully, it will move towards this direction. But what I would like to say is uh, this is not scary because it helps you plan better. It helps a company plan better their life. Actually, the, the embracing part of it and living with it, and as you live with it, understanding the value it brings, is probably the way that many, most of the people are understanding the value that AI brings. My advice always uh, to both my clients and to my teams and to my extended, let's say, environment is give it a try at a smaller scale, see how it enables you, you don't have to share anything if you don't want to share anything. But then, of course, you have to understand the limitations that AI can give back to you. Because you, we cannot expect from AI to solve the problems of this world. But at the same time, we don't share any data back to those technologies. It's a give and take. It's always a give and take. And okay. technology can only be smart if you feed it with data. OK, we'll have to leave it there because we've run out of time. But I hope that answers your question. And I'm sure over the next few days, that point in particular about how we have that level of responsibility with AI is going to come up. So thank you very much for the question. Tina Canero, thank you so thank much. Give a round so of applause, much. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.